beginning of the story is in this place and no matter how gifted you are as an artist I don't think you can convey that unless you've been here unless you soak it in from the stories in the land This place that we know as the Marae Ate of the Navigators. These are the popos that represent those navigators who came to Aotearoa. This place is called Pogangatira, means the backside of Marangatira. And over there, Marangatira sat and talked about whether they should or should not sign the Treaty of Waitangi. So they spent many, many days here when when they talked about the Treaty of Waitangi and they said they didn't move over a period of days while they were discussing the issue. I want to get a sense of history intertwining and how Aotearoa is changing. Mm. This is the Po representing the Ngāti Poro Waka Porota. Moana Jackson said, ah yes, this is from your ancestors, this is from um, Ngāti Poro and it's representing your waka. So of course I was naturally like drawn to it. I guess all my ancestry is from people from all, all over the world. I'm trying to think how I would reference that into the work with Sophia. And I think, you know, the way I'd do that would be through probably symbolism and maybe try and find meaning within the decorative way I paint the work as well. <laughs> no, I didn't want to necessarily take, you know, the, the, the designs, you know, that I see that, that represent, like, Māori culture. I didn't want to just take that. You know, I had to do something where I'll get the inspiration from the designs or the feeling, but also interpret it in my own way. Because that, that's kind of what I do when I reference designs from Cambodian culture. You know, I don't necessarily lift it off exactly. I, I interpret how, how it works for me. And, and I, I, I discover it through, that's how I discover it, through art. Remember this place, eh, is, is the Kui Tauras, is Tauranga Waka. It's a place where the wakas came to land, and so it's any waka that comes, so your, your people are on a waka too, if you like. We really want to represent that freedom of all peoples and like a mixture of everybody's histories interweaving. Seeing the pode has definitely influenced me because I think part of especially the Ngāti Pro one, will be the subject of the painting. That's why the Po were put there by these people, I think, to let our people find stories and ways of looking at things, so that's cool. Some common ground that we both have is a mixing of the Māori and Pākehā kind of cultures through iconography. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out. I just think bring it on. So far, the tohu, the signs have been good. Well, we've got a format, um, so we at least have a, a kaupapa, and it's based on the dual heritage that we both belong to. We've just been kind of like talking about how we're going to come up with a way of working to accommodate what we're comfortable in expressing. So we've divided up the canvas already. Me being the park out, I get 95% of the canvas. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that's a reasonable partnership. Or well, we could start at one end and see who gets the little first. <laughs> <laughs> We used to live off the, um, the pippy flat just out there. Mm. There used to be a hall over here that we held our community dances and functions. Yeah, it was a healthy living here. Yeah. We lived off the sea, grew our own veggies and stuff. Yes. Dad went hunting at the back there. Yeah. And he'd come back with a whole lot of pheasants on his back <laughs> and we'd all go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of our approach to this 
pros is about the process and I think we're just really keen to get going. I think we've got most of the kaupapa now. Mm. It's just a matter now of um, making decisions. Yes. I won't look. <laughs> no, look, it's your piece of artwork as well. Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. I get the beginning of it. Yeah. All right. foundation aim yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just went for some clarification on the articles. Coming from the angle of the treaty being a covenant, and as I see it, it's it, it's between three parties, the Crown, the Māori, but also God. It's um, central to our thinking is the Article 4. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The written text has only the preamble and three articles, but in the course of the discussions here at Waitangi, um, a number of the missionaries first, led by Bishop Pompalier, but also a number of rangatira, raised concerns about, well, what will this actually do um, in the missionaries' case to their ability to preach and so on, their different versions of Christianity, and what would it do specifically to the maintenance of te ritinga Māori or the philosophies and values of our people. And in response to that concern, a fourth article was drafted guaranteeing the right of the missionaries to preach if they so wished and the right of our people to continue to adhere to, develop reitinga Māori and so on. I grew up going to church as a young child. I always remember going to, down to our local Baptist church. Got married in 1999 and started our family. And I think that was the turning point for, for both Lola and I. Is that suddenly we had we realised we're bringing another person into this world. And what were the kind of the values or the beliefs that we were going to raise this this child with? The mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. I think from the moment I walked in the doors, I just knew in my spirit I was home. I was also hungry for it I guess in a way you know when you when you know that there is a God and, and you've walked you know on your own for so long I, I was at that point in my life where I was like yeah I want his voice back in my life. When I walked in obviously it was it was Bishop's voice that I heard. And Lord hear these truths, these principles. It was just such a truth in that voice that I'd never heard in any other church. And of course you looked around and there were all these beautiful people and I was like, far out, what's going on here? And everyone's happy and it's just such a, a great place to walk into and it's just never changed. In fact, it's just got better and better. It's, it's everything to us, it's our life. And we love walking that journey with, with all our other people that are you know, doing it with us as well. I was born into Te Hahi Ratana. I grew up in, in the church. It is a very important part of my life, even as I've got 
older, it's always been there. This is the um, Hall of Te Hahi Ratana, Mpho Valley in Whangarei. And I come to church as often as I can. My father was an Apotoro. My mother was, was an Afina. The, the church is uh, central, I suppose, to my thinking as well, and my work. Coming here makes you feel like you've got a place that you belong to. When you live in a, an urban area, it's make the, the whānau structures are now sort of, you know, not so tight. But coming here, you, you get the idea of the extended family and how the church brings us together. the Tanifa represent? I know Tanifa are like the, the guardians of natural places. They're often the spirits of places. 